Now what the hell is the point of marching a chopped off dragon's head through the street and calling it a traitor? What is the point of that? That's like in the Civil War, if, uh, like if after a battle, uh, Union officers chopped off a horse's head and brought it back to Boston and said, look at this dead horse, that's a traitor. <laughs> what the hell? It's gotta be the incest, bro. It's gotta be the incest. What is wrong with these people? Although, I guess that technically that was uh, Sir Trash Cole's idea. But anyway, real quick PSA before I get started tonight. We've, we've been doing a pretty good job as a society with this, but um, as we got three episodes left after this, can we, can we not spoil this show for people? Unfortunately, I got spoiled this week uh, in the comment section on last week's video. I had someone... Who uh, I will say the book readers have been very good this season, I think, in my opinion. And usually the people, the book readers that do spoil things are actually the people that just read Wikipedia plots and call themselves book readers. But apparently at the end of ep episodes, or maybe during the week, I'm not sure, they show little teasers for the upcoming week. I avoid those like a plague. I like going into every week blind. I want to be completely surprised by what happens. Unfortunately, someone commented on last week's video that Aegon is still alive, which really bummed me out to learn that. So, again, can we just not do that, please? Let people enjoy and experience this show week for week. And then once it's over, we can just talk about it freely. Now, I will say, the man might as well be dead. I mean, he is full-on Anakin right now without the suit. There was no Palpatine ready to give this man a suit. He is burnt to a crisp, barely breathing. And uh, I called out last week. I was like, Allison... She's going to know. That mother's intuition, she's going to know that Eamon did this. And <clears throat> I'll take that that council scene where she's just staring at him with the tears forming. She knows. She knows her son did this to her other son. She knows. Uh, I, I give Allison a hard time. I blame her for starting this war. Again, she took the words of an oh, oh, old man giving a prophecy sounding like Joe Biden at the debate. And uh, started a war with misinformation. But she she seems to be accepting that she made a mistake. And now she's witnessing the monsters that she created. So I actually was happy for her that she stood up for herself and said that she, she should be in Aegon's place while he recovers. Um, I was actually said, oh, it should be Allison. And then immediately she sp spoke up for herself. So unfortunately, Laris does have a point. They can't fight. Rhaenyra's claim stating that the realm will, realm will never never follow a woman and then have a woman leading them. It just doesn't work politically. So I get it. And it's no secret that I want Rhaenyra to win this whole conflict and I really feel bad for her. She is really down in the dumps. She's feeling the effects of being raised as a woman in that society. She has no fighting skills, no combat skills, and she's just really feeling the effects of that. But I'm like, Rhaenyra, you got to use put people around you that are good at that and unfortunately her husband bailed on her because it would be her him not that you necessarily want him making major decisions for you anyway as we've seen he is making terrible decisions for himself pretty much everything that he's tried to control so far in heron hall has gone to shit. it is not going well for our guy and he we just witnessed him having a dream or flat premonit not flashback premonition of him having sex with his mother i believe that's what it was who he never met because she died in childbirth with him. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Very weird. This man's going through it. But anyway, back to Renera. She's got to use the knowledge that she came up with. She, Like she said, she knows every lord of every house in the realm. She knows the dynamics between houses. She's got to, she's got to use that knowledge to her advantage and then appoint people around her that can you know, plan the battles. And that's what she's trying to do by getting the sea snake to try to be hand of the king, which hand of the queen and i think he's gonna accept one thing i was wrong about is i thought he was gonna be mad out for blood about renice dying and said he's just straight depressed and i don't blame him i mean he's losing his family left and right but i really hope he accepts that position because that's just what rhaenyra needs is a man like that as her right hand yeah right hand man now even though pretty much everything is going poorly for damon i gotta say his character is still captivating like I said in an earlier episode, a lot of that is props to just Matt Smith. I mean, he is, he's just knocking it out of the park. Uh, I forget, it was one of the earlier scenes this week where, <laughs> whatever he said, it was when he was trying to convince 
one of the Riverland uh, houses to join his side, and his response just cracked me up. He's he's such a good actor with his facial expressions and whatnot. He just kills it. I still think that's one of the more interesting parts of the show is what he's going to do. I still think there's a chance that he ends up going back to fighting with Rhaenyra just because I think he's just going to keep striking out with all the plans he's trying to come up with. And there's no, there's no doubt that the fight between Damon and Aemon is getting set up. I hope that happens this season. I'm not so sure. Again, only three episodes left. And this, this episode was a big, we gotta let it breathe. You know, last week was a banger as far as the, a lot of stuff happened at the end. So this week we gotta breathe. We can't really let any time pass. We gotta set the scene for all the characters. Now I will say the cat from the Queen's Council uh, that Rhaenyra is sending to go talk to Damon. I don't think that's gonna go very well for him. I would not be surprised if she never sees him again. Um, Damon has shown some restraint though, so I don't know. Maybe he'll turn on. Maybe he'll get there and then turn on Rhaenyra because Damon's showing more initiative. He's more about you know the getting straight to the fighting and raising an army. So that's definitely what I'm looking for the most next week is what happens with that dynamic and whose side does he end up choosing because he hasn't been exactly happy with how Rhaenyra has been leading the charge. And also, man, I just want to say I'm very proud of Jace. Allison's kids are just a mess. But uh, Rhaenyra did a great job with Jace, and I feel like his brother would have been very helpful as well. Obviously, he's Dunzo. Like I said earlier in the video, they got to use the knowledge they have about the houses and family lineages. And then at the end, Jace comes up with the idea, what about our distant relatives that have fallen out of the family line because of marriages, but they still have the dragon blood? We can use them. And I kept thinking to myself, at the end of season one, Damon went to try to talk to or tame to some of the unclaimed dragons, and they just completely let that go. It never came up again. Until now, there's still unclaimed dragons that are full adults, battle wit ready. They just need riders. And what a great idea they came up with. And also, Rhaenyra, she brought up how their blood's weak. Man, girl, you gotta remember, your, your son's a dragon rider, and his blood's a little weak as well. <laughs> I think she forgot. Uh... But those are the main things that stuck with me this week. Obviously, a much more chill episode than last week. I have no idea what's going to happen next week, so I'm, per usual, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'll see you guys in the comments. I want to thank you again for joining me. And, uh, yeah, have a good week.